In this video, we're talking about the dollar, we're going to talk about gold, and we're going to talk about the pop on indices that happened last night. Holy crap, were you watching the NASDAQ? It flew higher. We're going to talk about that and much, much more in this video. Let's jump in. Welcome back everybody to the channel. My name is Nick and on my channel, I try and keep it real with you and show you realistic trading tips, tricks, and ideas that I'm looking at throughout the week. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe as we jump into today's video. What you're looking at is my personal P&L this year so far. And believe it or not, even though we are down a whopping $22,000 this month, uh, it's actually come back a lot from the 32,000 that it was about a week and a half ago. What contributed to this? Well, it was a little bit of a pop in the indices. And if you're in our live room, you know we've been trading some indices recently on the options side. We've been trading some long and short on uh, indices, gold, things like that. It's been uh, a little bit of a recovery second half of August so far. So I just wanted to show you this is where I'm at so far. And now let's jump into some ideas, starting with the US dollar. So the US dollar is making a nice push here to the upside after we had basically unemployment claims come out this morning, showing some resiliency in the US jobs market. Now, why does this matter? If you're newer to my channel, then you might not know, but I like to incorporate both fundamentals and technicals into my trading videos. So when I come up with trade setups, I'm not just looking at pretty chart patterns and lines across the screen. I'm trying to add those pretty lines and uh, also incorporate macroeconomic stuff that's really moving the markets. So this morning we had unemployment claims, which were a really impactful uh, number, basically showing that jobs in the US are still relatively strong. Now, notably, what really happened was there were less people filing for unemployment than what was previously expected. And that, of course, caused the dollar to gain some, uh, some strength. Now, the technicals are an interesting side of this story as well. Notice that if we take a look left, there was this level of resistance that sellers were really holding the dollar at bay on, right? Several times price poked up to this area, sold off, sold off again, popped higher. Then again, PMI numbers came out kind of disappointing the market, which of course is another economic figure that came out yesterday. So we're getting some uh, two sides of the story, but today's number really kind of mutes yesterday's fears. So the dollar is really strong, but the question is, how do we trade this? And is this something that, you know, I'm looking to, to buy or am I looking to short this? Well, looking specifically at the dollar index, in the short term, I am bullish. Another big reason fundamentally is that the two year yields are up. This is a good measurement of the real year yields here in the United States. This is of course interest rates that I'm talking about. And remember, higher interest rates tend to cause a bullish currency. So as the two year continues to go up, the dollar looks really strong. So speaking of dollar strength, let's talk about a really important couple markets that we should think about in retrospect to this. Let's start with the euro. I know a lot of traders pay attention to the euro that watch my uh, watch my show here or watch my channel here. Take a look at the euro. We had a big sell off here this morning off of this claims number showing perhaps some continuation to this downward trend. I think that the euro is still uh, set to continue lower. In fact, if we take a look and we draw some kind of simple projections for where I think the euro may go next, uh, let's actually get our, our trend lines here and we'll clean this up a little bit. So we had a big push off of the highs here previously, back when we were trading around 1.1060. Uh, now we've seen a little bit of a kind of downward trend start to play out. This is a four hour chart, but I'm gonna take it down to the hourly in just a second. Notice that each time we've retested key level of structure, market put in a beautiful candle, for example, right here, nice pin bar, sold off, right? Came back up, little, uh, little bit of an ugly doji, candle thingy here and then sold off again. I don't really pay too much of attention to trying to get the perfect technical terms for candles as the market's not, it's a little bit noisy sometimes. So these candles are kind of just giving us a general idea of market's reaction to these areas. So we had a negative reje uh, rejection around 1.087 and sold off. So right now sentiment is telling me and directional bias here on the technical side is telling me still bearish. Now the real bearish catalyst in my opinion would be a breakout of the previous structure lows. For this, I think we need to go down to the hourly chart. So let's take a look. So the hourly chart, again, rejected this area. Beautiful. You can actually see that candle in perfect. Uh, it's like sun is shining bright on this candle here just before the darkness came and the market sold back off again. So big push to the downside here. And now the question is, can we get back down to the lows? But more importantly, guys, will we break 
the lows, right? It's one thing to say, oh yeah, we might retest, but then we could just bounce right off it. The strength here for sellers would be if we can actually break through the lows and see a continuation move start to play out. Now, why am I so bearish on the Euro? Well, I'll show you why. It's not just a pretty chart that I'm looking at to get this bias. It's also uh, a little bit of macroeconomic stuff. So to do this, I'm gonna go over to the Edge Finder, which is today's sponsor and also our company's software tool that we've worked really hard to build for traders who are looking to incorporate fundamentals and get confirmation on their trades. If you feel like you're using purely technicals and you're like, it would be cool to also be able to kind of check my work here with the fundamentals, this tool might be something for you to consider and stick around I'll tell you how you can get it for free. Just stay with me. So the Euro again is getting a very bearish reading right now. You can see it's getting a minus seven, but what the heck Nick does that even mean? Well, uh, look across the row here and you can see that if we wander our little eyes up to the top here, you can see we have all the different metrics that we're paying attention to. Starting from the right, actually, if we're talking fundamentals, interest rates, unemployment, inflation, GDP. These are real macroeconomic figures that are really important to a currency's directional bias. Or if you're talking about gold, same thing. If you're talking about NASDAQ, same thing. So anyways, what you'll notice is that in the fundamental section, let me actually get my highlighter out and I'll show you this. In the fundamental section for the euro and also for the pound, by the way, pound is one row higher, still getting a very bearish reading as well. What we see is that the economic figures all favor the US dollar. What do I mean favor? Well, we're getting red, meaning minus one, minus twos. These scores are printing here, and that's saying minus for the euro, positive for the dollar, right? If it's giving a minus one on the currency pair, it's saying bearish on the currency pair, euro short, dollar long. Well, economic figures are definitely favoring the US dollar at this time. So if you were looking at this in the last few weeks, it's been a really nice opportunity to short. I'll show you another chart just to show you how powerful the edge finder can be. Check this out. All right, so another colorful chart to look at, I know, but check this out. This is the edge finders historical backtest page. And this lets us look at historically, what has the edge finder been forecasting for the Euro USD. Well, check it out. Since the beginning of August, we have gotten bearish readings for the Euro USD. And certainly we can see that the forecast from the edge finder has worked out very, very nicely. And the market has continued to sell off here consistently. This is taking into the fundamentals, commitment of traders data. It's taking into lots of different seasonal trends. It's taking in all of the different algorithmic stuff that we do behind the scenes on this software. And the pre prediction has been very bearish and it has delivered very, very well. So if you've caught this move, then congrats. Uh, the edge finder has been very bearish in the Euro and still is. So what I am looking at from a technical perspective to enter a trade would be a break, retest and continuation opportunity. So there's a breakdown on the Euro. Now I mentioned you can get access to this for free. We are doing one day remaining on our free two day trial. If you haven't heard about this, here's some information. We've been offering the tool to the public full version for free for one day remaining at the time of recording this. Uh, this is ending soon. So this is a first come first serve kind of thing. If you would like access to the edge finder, click the link in the description and fill out that form for our free two day event. Again, uh, this is a basically a way to check out the software, play around with it and see if it's a useful thing to you. And just to be completely transparent, it is a marketing campaign for us. We want people to check out our software that we've worked so hard to build. And if you like it, hopefully you buy it and support our project so that we can keep building more tools. These things are very expensive to build multiple six figures. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, behind the scenes. Uh, it's a big investment to build software tools. And that's why, you know, if you look at Bloomberg Terminal or if you look at uh, Finviz or if you look at uh, uh, all the different great softwares out there. They're very, very demanding to build. Let's move on. I want to talk more about some other charts that I'm paying attention to. The NASDAQ popped real hard yesterday after Nvidia put out some really great earnings report numbers. And if you don't pay attention to stocks, that's all good. But the indices, a lot of you guys I know trade them and check this out. The NASDAQ exploded higher, beautiful green candles following this good report from Nvidia. If price pulls back, I'm a buyer. Now, I should say though, I'm a buyer if, if the edge finder actually gives me some confirmation to be a buyer, then this if becomes a, you know, a then that I act on potentially. But again, I'm looking for opportunities and I'm, at least from the technical perspective, I need a pullback, right? This is the four hour chart. We can draw our fibs from swing low here to swing high. I'd love to see a 50% retracement 
and maybe even a 61.8% retracement if we can get it. I might look to be a buyer in those areas, but it does seem like NASDAQ has popped real hard, probably due for a little bit of retracement as we did call for some more dollar bullishness. That dollar bullishness might have some negative impact on the stock market. As remember, fundamentalists here, if a stronger dollar is happening, usually that's fears that interest rates are gonna go higher. It's fears that the Fed might need to continue to kind of crack down on the US economy to keep things from getting too hot. And all of those things can hurt the profit margins of companies. Now, I know a lot of you guys wanna hear about gold and I definitely wanna talk about gold, but I already have. At the time of recording this, we just did a live stream with my friends Miko and Mark who came on the show here today. We do live stream Monday through Friday. Make sure to tune in if you don't already, but check this out. Miko, Marco, and I went over gold and we also had some really good conversations following it just about how many trades we want to generally hold in our accounts. Very useful information. Check it out. I do like the look of gold. Uh, okay. I do think there's a lot more downside to be had with this particular market. I want to see a bit more retracement because we did take the lows. I think last time we talked about gold uh, last Thursday, gold was around here. Uh, and now we've kind of seen a, a really nice up move. So I do still have a bearish bias for gold. I'm looking at a retest of this particular area here around 1930, 1940. So I'm looking for a lower high in that particular area. Right now we're quite bullish and we're seeing some downside, but we have seen a pretty big up move this week. So I'm looking for a little bit more upside into that area. And then that's when I'll start looking for my entries and possibly a lower high forming uh, for gold, but still a long way away from that so i'm kind of rolling that off until either tomorrow or potentially uh next week for me personally i'm you know waiting to see kind of a, a little bit of structure on the lower time frames to form you know perhaps something like this starts to form i might get back in on the short side but i also don't hate the idea of waiting for i would tend to agree you know you had this really strong kind of downward structure in the market uh it seems to have broken out of that i got uh stopped out on one of my shorts uh, the latest one. So I, I shorted a couple times last week and all of them were, I had three winners back to back, which is very mm -hmm. rare for me as my win rate is usually not that high. Um, however, my last one was, uh, it was the end of the party. Price broke out and started to trend back the other direction. Uh, so I'm kind of just on the fence with gold as well, but it is one that I am, I am personally watching. So I'm glad that you did that. Uh, for us, Miko. Uh, I wanted to to end our segment here today with a, a question for both of you guys, because I am I had somebody ask me this and I wanted to pass the question to you as well. And I'll go to Marco with this first. Marco, how many trades at one time can you possibly hold? And I, and I imagine there's probably gonna be some slight differences in our answers here, but Marco, how many trades at the same time uh, are you able to hold? I'm talking about your short-term strategy, no like longer term things that you might do. Uh, mm -hmm. What does that generally look like for you? So as I'm trading six pairs, I would hold six trades on those six pairs. Um, yeah, basically when I backtest, I backtest one pair at a time. So I don't do any sort of pair correlation and I would not hesitate to take another trade even if I was already in three trades on three other pairs. As far okay. as the fund account, so if you have a fund account, of course, that's a lot different because you have that daily drawdown. So I would be very careful with that. I would try to keep it like two trades open at a time maximum, maybe three, okay, with 1% risk just to be safe. But on my personal, if six setups form on all six, six of the pairs, I'll take them all because it's all a part of the probabilities. Again, I don't know where when the winners will come, when the losers will come. If I stay out of one trade, why did I stay out of that one? Why did I take another one if all of them fit my plan? So I cannot mess with the probabilities. Okay, now that's that's a great answer. And and you also mentioned a really key thing uh, in that answer as well, just talking about correlations. And uh, that is something that you, if you're at home and you know, you're doing your back testing, you should at least consider you know, does that, is that going to impact your strategy or not? Right. Cause if you're trading Aussie dollar short and Euro dollar short at the same time, there's a very strong probability that both of those trades are going to move in the same direction. So you almost took two trades on the same thing. So you have to be careful. And, uh, you know, again, at, at the end of the day, do your back testing. Are you going to be comfortable holding multiple trades at the same time? You're going to size down. These are things that we, you know, this is why we have these conversations on the stream because it's so, so important. Um, Miko, what about, what about yourself? What do you, how many trades would you hold hypothetically at the same time as kind of a maximum? So yeah, uh, my normal rule is two trades uh, maximum at once. 
So I kind of have uh, risk um, parameters for my trading. So maximum amount of trades I can take in the day is two. Uh, max trades holding at once is two. Max loss, loss during the week, three losses. Uh, max uh, consecutive losses before I, I stop and do anything, eight. So uh, I normally stick to those rules and they kind of give me comfortability when I'm trading because I know that as long as I obey them, my risk is managed on my account. Um, but yeah, I mean, from a probability standpoint, market makes complete sense there, but I like having that comfortability of two trades um, from a psychological standpoint as well. Having a lot of trades makes me a little bit, uh, a little bit jumpy sometimes, but two is like a soft spot. It's not too much, not too little. And yeah, sometimes I do miss some trades if I do have two trades at one point, but uh, I'm okay with it. No, that's a great answer because, you know, the, the point of me even asking the question is, there's a bit of subjectivity here there's a bit of knowing yourself and you know trading is not a hard science there's a reason that when you know you're out here trying to trade and trying to learn to trade uh somebody can't just hand you a a you know a, a note card that says do all of these things and you will be printing money all the time right there are interpersonal kind of uh subjective nature things how many trades can you take before you start losing your focus how many you know these things are uh, person to person so uh, Marco, I actually, uh, or, or Miko, I actually, um, I personally trade uh, similar in a way. Like I only usually hold two active trades at a time uh, or a short term trade because uh, I do run kind of two different si uh, strategies simultaneously where I do some options trading as well as kind of what we talk more about here, like the active, uh, you know, long, short kind of uh, strategies. So uh, in terms of short term trades, I'm, I'm on the two uh two max losses per day train as well uh after that i'm kind of just like i feel like i'm i'm forcing trades and i usually actually uh to to marco's point uh about missing trades that does actually consistently cause me to sometimes miss trades like more opportunities set up than i actually end up taking so sometimes i have to like filter um and and you know just a personal way that i usually do that is through the edge finders like scoring mechanism like if it's a higher score uh and it's something that i prefer to trade i might focus a little bit more on that so again lots of different uh personal rules that I think everybody in the audience should be asking themselves these types of questions. If I'm asking Miko and Marco, it's because I think everybody should be asking themselves. So if you're looking to improve as a trader, we've got some cool free resources here that I wanted to share as we close today's video. Down below in the description, there is a link to join our Discord channel or our Telegram channel. And we also have our website, a1trading.com, where traders can get access to free course material to help you improve as a trader. Remember, we are also live Monday through Friday on this channel around 9.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcasting most live news events and that sort of thing. So hope to see you there. And also, we do have a couple videos here showing up on the screen. If either of these seems like it might be helpful to you, then make sure to click here or here, and we'll see you there.